The X-Wing games are immensely important as they were instrumental in setting up what would later be referred to as the Star Wars Expanded Universe. After Return of the Jedi, there were no more Star Wars stories until the creation of the Star Wars Expanded Universe in the early 90s. The first X-Wing game doesn't contribute much to the Expanded Universe, rather it just tells the story of an unknown rebel pilot flying in campaigns against the Empire. The events in X-Wing take place alongside the first film and they culminate with the player taking control of Luke Skywalker and flying the trench run to blow up the first Death Star. The two expansions put you back in the pilot seat, flying missions which lead up to the establishment of Echo Base on Hoth. The second game in the series is TIE Fighter, and this is where it really starts to warm up. This is where Lucas really started to put effort into establishing their expanded universe. This game and Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire books form the origin of the greatest villains Star Wars has ever had, Grand Admiral Thrawn. TIE Fighter defines the X-Wing series for this. It's the first time we see an expanded universe character in a starring role. It's the first time the books and the video games cross over. And most importantly, it helped to establish this ongoing connected universe of stories across media formats. X-Wing captured the essence of A New Hope, but TIE Fighter broadened that scope and forged its own path. TIE Fighter's story is about an Imperial pilot, part of a special task force put together by a young Vice Admiral Thrawn to root out rogue admirals who are no longer loyal to the Emperor. Set in the background of the original trilogy, TIE Fighter tells us that there could be stories like this happening somewhere else at the same time. Thrawn's empire isn't outwardly evil. You're playing as the baddies, but you're preserving order, dealing with power struggles, something which makes sense with an empire this big, and it showcases Thrawn's tactical genius, which is what makes him such a great villain. TIE Fighter and the Thrawn novels established a precedent for the expanded universe, attention to continuity across multiple platforms. You can pause a single shot in any of the movies and you say, see that guy in the back? See that droid? That ladder? There's a backstory for that. Combining the books, the games, the films, the comics, the TV. Well, it's a blinding experience. And there's nothing else quite like it out there in geekdom. The third game in the series was a dodgy, multiplayer-only flop and a costly lesson in what Star Wars fans wanted out of their games. X-Wing vs TIE Fighters 1 expansion added a small campaign but incredibly supported 8-player online co-op, something which is still yet to be beaten for a game of this type. Despite the lack of story, LucasArts were investing in emerging technologies, something which would later define the studio. X-Wing Alliance overhauled the game engine, making the gameplay more realistic and added the ability to switch between crew members on bigger ships. More importantly, Alliance made up for X-Wing vs TIE Fighters cock up by further cementing its story into events from the expanded universe. Like TIE Fighter before it, X-Wing Alliance threads into the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire project, with one mission actually crossing over with a level from the Shadows of the Empire video game, which as far as I know is an industry first and is something you certainly do not see every day. Imagine the possibilities in today's video games. If you're up for trying one of these games, be warned they are hard. No hand holding, no tutorial levels, these are fairly realistic spaceship simulators. Expect to be switching to rear deflectors, rerouting power from the engines, changing laser recharge rate, dodging incoming fire. The games use nearly every key on the keyboard and this is actually part of the reason the franchise isn't around anymore. The rise in games console revenue ushered in in an age of multi-platform development and complicated keyboard layouts became impossible to port onto a controller. Factor 5's Rogue Squadron series did trim down the complexity into a console-friendly experience. It was revealed that Factor 5 were developing a fourth Rogue Squadron game called Rogue Squadron X-Wing vs TIE Fighter. Now that might be kicking around on a server somewhere. TIE Fighter established Grand Admiral Thrawn and showed how effective marrying up the games with the expanded universe could be. We've got the technology, space sims are popular again, and Grand Admiral Thrawn is back on the scene. Who knows? We could still see a modern TIE Fighter game set during the reign of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Thanks for watching, chaps. Subscribe for more Star Wars gaming videos.